PCA 2011. The inaugural super high roller. Bryn Kenny came up short. Four years later, history repeated itself. Now, he's back at the final table, hoping third time's a charm. It's pretty annoying to just never get to finally hold the trophy. But if you think that you're gonna come in second, you're just done already. You just wanna win, so it's just like battle mode. But he's going to battle against some of the best in the game. Two online high stakes specialists. Italy's most successful player. The reigning World Series main event champ and one of the hottest tournament talents in the world. Can Bryn Kenny overcome? And finally, find redemption. Welcome to the Bahamas, where the Atlantis Resort and Casino is playing host to the PokerStars.com PCA 2016. Players have arrived from all over the world for poker's preeminent party. And as usual, the festival begins with the 100K Super High Roller. Now, we're down to our final table, where the last man standing will take home almost $1.7 million. So a new year and a new poker arena, where six super high rollers will compete for the first title of PCA 2016. It's a circus maximus of pros. These are the big buy-in regs, and pretty much all these guys go to sleep on piles and piles of money. <laughs> Including the reigning World Series of Poker main event champ Joe McKeon, and Mr. Bryn Kenny, who has now final tabled this event three times. Yeah, last year Bryn upgraded his bronze medal to a bronze medal. But this year, with the chip lead, maybe gold? Bryn has been on a heater in this event, and his bittersweet history here will be a distant memory if he can seal the deal. When you get so close, you're just thinking about winning. You want to hold up the trophy when all your friends are watching you. My plan for this final table is kind of play just in the trenches, pop out every once in a while. But in the super high roller, it's never easy. Ankush Mandavia is snapping at Kenny's heels. He's had some big scores recently, but isn't letting success go to his head. It's just an honor to be competing with all these guys to play them. I've been lucky enough to make a final table, so I'm hoping to capitalize on that. Lying in third is online wizard Ike Haxton. He's got eight figures and live caches to his name and he's guaranteed to spread fear whenever he sits down at a poker table. The reigning World Series of Poker main event title holder Joe McKeon comes into this event fourth in chips. Super high rollers are always going to be tough. The players are just so great. It definitely gets your mind thinking when you're playing them. Mustafa Kanit won the EPT Barcelona high roller this season and is now looking to make his mark at the PCA. It's uh, really nice to win this kind of tournament because the competition is pretty high. We are all friends, but there is big ego between us, so it means a lot. And you can never rule out David Peters. With almost $10 million in live earnings, he's proved he knows how to take down a title or two. Game face is on. Let's play some cards. Joe, you won the Risk, champ Risk World Championship? Hasbro <laughs> recognizes it, so they called it the World Champion, the Championship because they thought they'd get away with it. <laughs> Bryn's looking yeah, for was, new games to no, play for. I was wondering, like, how you qualify for, like, the World Championship of Risk, like, how much is first? <laughs> There's been, like, four years where they haven't had it, so that, that's how important it is to the world. Quite. Yeah. No money in Risk. Everybody's solid. Well, it's almost an all-American final table. Can it was a short stack for most of the penultimate day, but managed to survive with some timely double-ups. 
Kenny's the chip leader, but Haxton, McKeon and Mandavia are very close behind. Blinds, 30,000, 60,000 with a 10,000 ante. I think the favorite here has got to be Ike Haxton. I mean, not really, but everyone always asks me to pick a favorite. Well, Ike is in the big blind in this hand. It's been folded around to Mustafa Kanit on the button, and he's got aces. You know, it only looks like he's dressed up. He's got shorts on under that. Kanit raises. Makes it 125,000. Ike who came second in the 2007 PCA main event, has Jack-8 off. And Mustafa's button raise will look less credible than a news story from realtruthernews.org. Ike defends. Very easy common defend for Ike. Wow, what a flop. Top set for Canet, royal flush draw for Ike. Pretty sick. Action check to the pre-flop aggressor. Can it continues for 125,000. With this super nut royal draw, Ike could sail off here. He just calls. I think it's probably because he's doing so bad against the king of clubs. The turn is the seven of clubs. Ike with the second nut flush. He is now a 77% favorite. Strange board, strange situation. Action's been checked to Kenneth. I mean, you got top set, but ugh. He checks it back. The rivers, the Queen of Hearts pairing the board. That's a boat for Kenneth. That is a reassuring card. And this hand is about to be a mind melt. 590,000 in the middle. Kenneth, the effective stack with 1.4 million behind. Looks like Ike's betting for value. 450k. Mustafa only need worry about a flopped royal and rivered quad, so my guess is he's gonna be raising here all day, every day. All in. He shoves. Ah, oh, Ike is in a very interesting spot where he can only beat a stone bluff. And Mustafa's actually pretty dang likely to be sly in the family stone bluffing here. Cost Ike half of what he's got to call. You win. Yeah, let's it go. Show me the bluff. It'll be a lot of fun. Don't do it. Or do. I, I don't know why I care. The stuff of Canet, who won the first ever one day super high roller on the tour, chips up. <laughs> I even had the den blocker, Moose. I uh, still fold. Don't comp I didn't show my cards yet, so no one can say nothing to me. Why would Ike need a tenth blocker? What's he got against tenths? Everyone loves camping. Apart from me, I prefer to stay in a hotel. <laughs> and Kushmandavia is on the button. He folds. Round to Canet in the small blind. Queen five off. He calls. Don't give this joker a free look at the flop. Actually do. Again, I'm not sure why I care. Bryn Kenny checks his option. And he flops two pair. Nobody likes to hear I told you so, so I'll just say I told you this would happen. Kenneth's gonna bluff at it. 100,000. So far, 100,000 into the abyss. Hopefully the hemorrhaging stops here. Kenny calls. The turn card is a queen. Can it now with a pair? Oh no. But he slows down, he checks. Bryn does the betting, 165,000. This is really bad for Mustafa. It's pretty hard for Bryn to have a hand that's beating a queen. He would have raised most of his aces pre-flop. It counts out the call and makes the call. The abyss keeps getting full of his chips. 
And it's a four on the river. That's a full house for Bryn Kenny. Another terrible card for Mustafa. He's now basically chopping against all other queens. He's checked. Bryn is betting. Into 790,000, he makes it 345,000. It's just so hard for Mustafa to be losing here. Pretty good shot he calls. He calls! Full house. Family Matters. What? Well, sorry, I thought we were just naming 90s American Friday Night sitcoms. Bryn Kenny extends his chip lead. He earned more than $2 million in 2015, and a decent chunk of that came from his third place finish in this event last year. What? Did you see that? What was that sorcery? That was legit. Lines of 5,100. It's been folded around to Ike Haxton, who's on the button with a 15 big blind stack. Ike with 10 9 suited. He's got 19 of spades. That's pretty good. All in. Ike shoves. David Peters folds. Call. Joe McKeon calls. Ike at risk and a two to one underdog. At least his spades are like. Oh, no, that's awkward. Why'd I say that? We're gonna get an eight high flop here, and he's gonna be dead on the turn. Three spades, eight high flop? No. <laughs> Ace, four, two, all red cards? Yeah, not that either. Here comes the flop. And it's ace high. That's a bad start. <laughs> Pretty close to what Joe called for. Eight of spades. Yeah, that's fair. You're right, most of it needs to turn around. The turn card is a 10. Take a spade on the river now. You. Little bit of hope for Ike. <laughs> spade would be great. Axton has five outs. He needs a nine or a 10. It's a five. All right, good game, game Mike. Game, Mike. Ike, Axton, the first man out. Good game, man. Good game. Good game, Mike. Good game. Good game, Geppetto. One of our two. In che in bocca al lupo, mortacci tua. My Italian's a little rusty, but how dare he bring Ike's mother into this? And Joe McKeon is now playing a stack of 3.6 million. As Ike Haxon walks away with $360,000, this is his first ever PCA Super High Roller Cash. Well, the guy I picked his favorite is out. You got any bright ideas? Tag him. PCA 2016. Listen to more of my jokes and embarrassing stories about poker getting in the way? Subscribe to EGT Not Live on iTunes or download it from soundcloud.com slash EGT Not Live. There's guests, competitions, online dating. You can even get some behind the scenes gossip on the show you're watching right now. That's right, more layers than an advanced Rubik's Cube, which has two layers. More layers than that. While most people soak in the rays, it's all business for the five remaining players at the PokerStars.com PCA Super High Roller. Cash game specialist Ike Haxton was the first casualty of the day, with WSOP main event winner Joe McKeon reaping the rewards. As the blinds continue to rise, it's do or die for the remaining short stacks. And one of those short stacks has a decision right now. Mustafa Kanet has ace nine in the big blind, and Ankush Mandavi has shoved on him. It's all in to call. Well, Mustafa's got a better ace. Of course he should call. I'm kidding. He can't know that, but blind on blind, this is a must call. He does call. He has his opponent dominated. He's in a great spot to double up. Mustafa's being swept by his girlfriend, Anna Grandinetti, and if he goes broke here, he'll win 461 Grandinetti. Mustafa with roughly 61% equity, 15% chance of a chop. The flop, seven, four, three. Ace nine holding, but Mandavi has flopped a gut shot. That ace nine's looking good, like a half tuxedo. 10 on the turn, so can it will double up unless there is a five or a six on the river. 
It's a blank. Mustafa Kanet survives. 1.280. Angkush, more like anguish, am I right? He's left with 17 bigs. Meanwhile, Mustafa Kanet is now playing 26 big blinds. We're still at the 5100 blind level. Next hand. David Peters first to speak. When does he ever speak? He folds. Jim McKeon's out. All in. Anchor shoves the button with ace tray. Call. And Bryn Kenny calls with king queen suited. Ace nine was a must call before against the stack this short. King queen also a must call. Good luck, Bryn. Good luck. Well, this time, Mandavia is the player at risk. Ace high, still holding after the flop. Good flop. Good flop for both of us. <laughs> Turn card is a deuce. Bryn looking for a queen or a king to KO Mandavia. It's a jack. Ace high holds. That's brutal. See the paint. And just like that, Ankush is back in the game. It's big hands. Well, he is a PCA regular and enjoys his annual business trip to the Bahamas, especially when he gets to bring his family with him. My fondest PCA memory was my sister and her fiance got engaged here. My brother-in-law now had asked my father and me for permission to marry my sister, and we gave it to him, and he set it up here at the PCA, and it was very exciting. I was just in uh, Washington, D.C. for the wedding uh, two months ago, and also they did another reception in Malaysia, and I was there for that. So it's been really exciting, and I'm really happy for them. Family is definitely very important to me. Um, I wouldn't be here without the support of my, uh, my friends and family. Uh, my mom and dad and my sister, so they're definitely the most important people in my life. I'm planning on playing a lot of tournaments here at the PCA. This is just something where I feel like I can compete, and uh, I'm hoping to win this tournament and then fly my family out. I want to say hi, and I know I have the support back home. Well, now I know why Ankush's sister stopped writing me back. Well, for this next hand, we are going to sweat with Mr. Mandavia. We'll only see his whole cards. All right, I'll do it. Actions on Joe McKeon. He folds. So Ankush has ace-10 on the button. He raises to 200,000. Mustafa Kanet in the small blind. Folds. Bryn Kenny in the big blind. We're almost always gonna get looked up out of the big blind. Think about it, why else would it be a sweat with, hmm? He calls. We just have to hope to hit the flop, or be a good poker player, whichever. Well, it is a good flop for Ankush. Top pair, top kicker. That is hitting the flop indeed. Bring Kenny checks. Let's do this, Val Beautiful. 500,000 in the middle, the C bet. Is 150,000. 150? Yeah, he just said that, Bryn. God. The sizing's actually very small. You might want to bet a little bigger because there are lots of bad turns. Kenny calls. Turn card is the nine of hearts. Not a terrible turn. Pretty good, actually. Bryn checks for a second time. And here comes a second barrel. Like the last person in a conga line, I am getting behind it. Ankush bets 375,000. I think there's again an argument for making this a little bigger, but whatevs. Once again, Kenny calls. What's he calling twice with? The river card is a queen. So that's an over card to Ankush's pair, and it makes the board straighty. Even though I think it's a little thin, 
I think we can bet again here. Nope. Action goes check, check. Bryn Kenny shows King 10. Worst 10. Yep. Worst 10. And Anchor sheds 815k to his stack. I thought it was pretty likely Bryn had a pair and not super likely he was floating with a hand that turned into a straight draw that later turned into a straight. But hey, what do I know? I can see the whole cards. Except that time I couldn't. Well, it wasn't looking good for Ankush a few hands ago, but he's now chip leader. Bryn Kenny slipped into third. Mustafa Kanat is the short stack with 10 big blinds. We're now at the 6120 blind level. Joe McKeon is second on the leaderboard. He's got ace three under the gun. Check it out, David Peters in the big blind and his short stack. Raised to 240,000. Peters has aces. Oh, hello. He's got 10 big blinds behind. And he elects to just call. I actually really like this because I think there's tons of hands he would just call with. A 7 4 deuce flop. Peter's still the favorite, but McKeon has flopped a straight draw plus a backdoor flush draw. Yeah, this is not a stellar flop for Peters. Three of hearts on the turn. Well, David Peters has earned more than half of his total career earnings in the last 12 months. He has been on a heater. He's going for value now, 330k. Peters thinks he wants to call here, but McKean has got so many outs, he could very well raise to make sure he doesn't get bluffed on the river. He calls. The river is the jack of clubs, so the board is bricked out for McKean. Too many outs, I guess. Come on. Peters shoves. And McKean falls. Perfect river for Peters. Yeah, hold it. He's now playing a stack of more than two million for the first time today. So next hand. And Kushmandavia will be under the gun. First to speak. He faults. Mustafa Kanet. 10-9 suited. 1.155. That'll be all in then. So specific. Round to David Peters. Ace King. Mine. He reshoves. It pretty much ensures Joe has to fold most of his hands. So Mustafa Kanet is the player at risk, but he's not that far behind. Ace King's only a 60% favorite here. 40% of the time, it works every time. Well, Kanet has flopped a straight draw, plus his pair outs are still live. 48% of the time, it works every time. Well, that's a straight. No sweat. Peters is drawing dead. Told ya. The last tournament I won actually didn't want any showdown. That's pretty good. <laughs> so I'm... I think in this tournament you have to win a few showdowns to win the tournament. That's the way it is. <laughs> Let's go. Welcome back to the Bahamas and the PokerStars.com PCA Super High Roller final table. During the break, five became four as David Peters was KO'd by Bryn Kenny. Bryn's looking to better his previous third place finishes. Right now he sits third in chips. Is this the year he'll shake the tag of nearly man? Hey man, it's the 21st century. Men, nearly men, we gotta treat everybody the same. Overruled on the basis that nearly person sounds weird. <laughs> Blinds still 6120. Jack 8 suited for Joe McKeon, the reigning World Series of Poker main event champ. That is a long title. He raises to 240k. Round to Bryn Kenny in the big blind, who has King Queen. Oh, yeah, that's a sweet ass defend hand. Bryn calls. And McKeon flops best, pairing his jack. 
Kenny checks. Seems like a pretty obvious spot to check back the flop. Bryn would have defended with any ace. McKeon's not checking back. He continues for 160K. It's a small bet, and I think it's probably because he's trying to get value out of weak pairs and gut shots, maybe even protect against the hand like King-Queen. Yeah, Bryn does have a gut shot, and he calls. Gotta call once. He could even have the best hand sometimes. The turn sees McKeon pick up a flush draw to go with his pair. He's now a big favorite. Action goes check, check. And Kenny catches a king on the river. Me, mm, do you, Kenny? He's gonna bet. 245,000. Kevin McPhee among the players, sweating Bryn. I think he's gonna see Joe McKee and pay this off. Sure enough, Joe calls. Yeah, it looked like Joe didn't have much there. Bryn could have easily been bluffing with a missed draw. Nice river, Kenny. Nice river. And the crowd goes wild. You might remember, Brim was on Kevin's rail when he was heads up in the London main event last season. Little sweat buddies. Action has been folded around to Ankush Mandavia in the small blind. Ace, Jack, he completes, setting a trap. Sevens for Canet. That is a monster for blind on blind. Looks like a raise is coming. Of course it is. That's a total of 290,000. Another raise is also coming. All in. Anchor shoves on Mustafa. Seven's too strong to fold. Yep, he calls and we're off to the races. Too strong to fold, too short to fold. Like rum versus tequila, one of these two hands has a slight mathematical advantage. And the Canic crew are on their feet. Their boy is the slight favorite here, but he is at risk. Here comes the flop. 10, 9, 8. Interesting. Mandavia's outs increase. He's got aces and queens working for him, and he swapped jacks for sevens. I'm just going to take your word for it. Four hearts on the turn, so Canet has nine cards to fade to survive. The river. Here's a queen, that's a straight for Ankush. Begin, mister. Canet busts in fourth. Begin, Begin buddy. Take it down, bro. More like Ankush man eater. Well, we are now down to three, and Ankush Mandavia is the chip leader. Poor Mustafa. I got no place else to go. It's the year of Mandavia. Mandavia. Well, the stacks are pretty shallow right now. McKeon with 22 big blinds, Kenny with 26. Mandavia leads with a 41 big blind stack after eliminating Mustafa Kanet. I think I make a couple mistakes uh, I should not make, so I'm really disappointed about myself. But overall, it was, was a fine final table. Like, I make what I had to make. If I had to put my money, I put it on Brim. Because I uh, have good stack, have good position on the table, and he's playing pretty good. He's a nice boy. Blinds are now 80,000, with a 20,000 ante. Cushy. Some people call Ankush Cushy, but I heard he prefers Cushy Wishy Ra Ra Ya Ya. Well, he completes from the small with jack nine of clubs. Kenny checks his option with eight seven. Free flop. Second pair for Ankush. Up and down draw for Bren. A bet of 200,000. Cold. And when Bren doesn't raise there, I think the nine's going to be the best hand a lot. Four on the turn. Mandavia now better than a four to one favorite. And Kush could easily bet again. No, he checks. Might look like a check for pot control, but I think he's doing this to induce bluffs from floats. And even though Bryn's up and down, his actual hand is pretty bad, so betting makes sense. 340,000 into 780,000. And Avia calls. He likes his nine, and he is right. The 
the river card. It's a five. Bryn gets there on the river again. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's a super straight. Action's been checked to Kenny. Let's see how big a bet he goes for here. There's 1.46 million in the pot. Big hand, big bet. Yeah, that's 1.27 million. Tough decision for Ankush. Even tougher when you take into account the fact that these people came all the way from Canada to see him make this decision. They just look Canadian. Also on the rail, Andrea Kari and Admiral Adama. <laughs> Ankush may get away from this. If Bryn were floating the flop, he will have gotten there pretty often on this river. That's a call. Not. Oops. And that's going to give Bryn Kenny the chip lead once again. That was definitely a nice river, nice hand. Bryn is a dangerous player when he's not making hands. When he is, he's Bryn Vincible. Did you really just say that? Okay, yeah, thanks. Yeah, and I just trademarked it. The number of Bryn Kenny supporters appears to be growing. Yeah, now we got Dylan Lindy, probably some more Canadians. And there's Chris Oliver, who was second in the PCA main event back in 2011. So Ankush has gone from the top to the bottom of the leaderboard in one hand. You said 3.7. Folded to McKeon in the small blind. King 10 of hearts. That's a call. 10-7 off for Mandavia. Oh, doesn't take the free flop. Raises to 460k. 10-7 plays pretty well post-flop in this situation. Seems a little odd to turn into a bluff in a spot where Joe is going to be limb calling a lot of hands that also play well post-flop. McKeon calls. Nearly a million in the middle. We're off to the flop. And this one is all about the draws. Straight draw for Ankush. Flush draw for Joe, who's still ahead, by the way, with King High. Action goes check, check. Ooh, I think you got to see bet that. Whatever, Ankush. Board pairs on the turn. Easy for Joe to bet here once Ankush has given up the lead. 475,000. This should be an easy call for Ankush, though. He does call. Nearly two million in the pot now. The river card is a 10, so now it's all about the kickers. Even though the spot looks thin to me, I think Joe is going to have no problem value betting this. Seven hundred and fifty thousand. Tall. Got a 10. Ankush quickly calls. You got a 10, me too. What's your kicker? Ah, uh, not a four? Okay, I lose. And with that hand, Joe McKeon takes the chip lead. 6.2 million. Sure, why not? He hasn't won anything for two months. You could play with the best by joining us at the next PCA. Win your seat at pokerstars.com. Here on Paradise Island in the Bahamas, Joe McKeon is chip leader at the PCA Super High Roller final table. Just a few months ago, he outlasted more than 6,400 players to win the World Series of Poker main event. $7.6 million richer, he's now the favorite to lift the first trophy of the PokerStars.com PCA 2016. I won the World Series main event in 2015. That was the biggest poker accomplishment in my life. It's been a little life-changing. I get to play in the super high rollers. I test myself for some of the best in the world. I definitely wouldn't have done that if I didn't win the main event. But I'm not trying to let it get to me too much. I'm still the same person. 
I've been to the PCA three times. I enjoy coming here. Uh, my best memory of the PCA was definitely winning my first tournament. I was still in school, so it was a really good way to start a bankroll and kind of get my career in the right direction. That was definitely the launching point for me. Four years, won a lot of poker tournaments. I have a lot of poker trophies. I win a bracelet. I made the final table of Super High Roller. My next goal is to win this tournament today. Joe McKeon doesn't dress for the job he has. He dresses for the job he wants. Unemployment. Well, he's first to act here. Line's still 8160. Eight six off. That's a fold. All in. I think it shoves with king four. How much? Youch, domination nation. Like just over two? Don't think he can fold. Kush doesn't want to tell me. At least we'll tell you. Two million and one thirty five. Call. On their backs. King. King. Good. Mandavia at risk and behind. That's so annoying. You get it in with King Four and you're not even live. Ah! Yeah. Yo, Kenny. Same as before. I'm looking at you. I'm getting anxiety with him yeah. looking over here. <laughs> we got King Nine to King Four. Did Bryn just call that guy Kenny? Isn't Bryn Kenny Kenny? Chop. I'm not going to look at the board. Last time, I only look at Kenny. So there's a Kenny railing Bryn Kenny. He's Kenny! The flop is Jack-10-6. That's not good. Don't worry, I don't look. I just look <laughs> at Kenny. I don't want to see the board. The first rule of Kenny Club is that you only look at Kenny. It's just the offsuit four. And Kush with three outs. One card to come. You gauge in the reaction by the crowd? No, just Kenny. Just one person. I see. Do you? No four. Hey, buddy. Good game. Play great. Good luck. Good game, bro. Good game. Ankush Mandavia out in third for the better part of 800 grand. Man, I thought Bryn liked Kush. So I guess we're Thanks. going heads up. Bryn Kenny versus Joe McKeon. Loser has to wear a collared shirt for a week. I've played some heads up before. I've tended to do well. Joe won the main event, which is great for him. Bryn seems to always do well here in the super high roller, so he's definitely going to be a tough player. I've never played with him before, but I feel strong playing heads up. Winning this tournament would mean a lot. I would feel pretty good about myself make one misstep and it could just all be over after playing two days really well. Man, if I don't win this tournament again, it's going to be too bad. So Bryn's gone one spot better than before. Can he go one step beyond and finally take down a super high roller? He's got the slight chip advantage. And on this hand, we're going to play against Kenny as we sweat with Joe McKeon. Let's do it. He's raised with king six of diamonds. And Bryn defends. Second pair, backdoor flush draw. Hard to make a pair. Kenny has checked. I think a lot of folks are gonna check back here. I'm cool with that. Yeah, I guess we're gonna bet. McKeon continues to 340,000. Although I kinda like how we're going for value early with a fairly vulnerable hand. Kenny calls. Hello, diamond draw. Pretty good card for us. Again, I like checking back so we can either get there or make a thin value bet on the river on a good card. Action does go check, check. Board pairs on the river with the three of hearts. Bryn Kenny checks for a third time. And I'd say this is one of those pretty good cards we can value bet. It's a thin value bet, but it looks like we're going to make a big one. One million, roughly two thirds of the pot. I like it. I think Bryn almost always has a six or a four here, and we beat pretty much all of those. Oh, McKeon might get looked up here. If he's thinking about this hard, I like her chances. 
Uh, never mind. Well, this is weird. A check raise from Bryn. This is super scary. Bryn just polarized himself to bluffs and huge. I was value betting. Keyword was. He's three, five, three, seven, five. Pretty good. I feel like you're not checking queen six or queen four. Queen three. There are a lot of hands Bryn could have that are beating us, but I think we've played this hand like we don't have a queen, so we might look like an easy target for a fold. I'm actually feeling a call here. McKeon calls. Show it, Bryn. McKeon is good. It was a bluff raise from Bryn with ace high. Nice try, Lao Shea. And McKeon now has the big chip advantage over Bryn Kenny. Felt like ace high. I don't know if it was ace three. I don't know. These two guys may dress like they're going to an all-you-can-eat buffet, but they sure can poker. Well, watching this heads-up battle with keen interest is a guy who's cashed in two PCA super high rollers, Daniel Negreanu. Well, I've played a lot of poker with both of them. Obviously, Joe McKeon in the main event when he knocked me out in 11th place. And, you know, he, he played perfectly, really. I mean, he was very, very lucky and ran good. So it'll be interesting to see how he does when he faces off against a really great player who's, who's experienced like Bryn Kenny. Bryn's another guy who I've played with for many years, thinks the game at the very deep level, is capable of anything at any time, which makes him very, very tough to play against. What do you say? All I heard was beard. Blinds are up. Yeah, I mean, it's a respectful call and folding to a lot of people there. Yeah, yeah, of course. Action on McKeon. All in. Call. Well, that was fast. Joe shoves on Bryn, and Bryn calls all in with Ace King. Oh my god, they haven't killed other Kenny. And Mustafa's back. Hooray! 12 bigs. <laughs> Bryn, the player at risk. He's up against McKeon's 8 9. There's an Ace. Oh, there's an Ace in the window. Oh, there's a 9 behind it. Both have a pair? Thank you, Kenny. The turn card is a deuce. So if Joe hits an eight or a nine on the river, he is the super high roller champion. Bryn will double up if McKeon doesn't hit one of his five outs. The power of Christ compels you. The river card is a 10. Kenny doubles up. The Jersey boys play on. Not those jersey, but you know, you get it. I don't know, we could just, we could just get ace king and I can just get like nines this time we can get it in again. All right, that's fine, that's fine. Makes it easy, don't have to think anymore. I'm probably trying to get nines in pre against you, just right now, just in case you didn't know. <laughs> Seems like a good hand heads up. Poker humor. McKeon still with the big chip advantage. So where it should be, like 5.5 to 5.6, and he's two. Wow, this is where the real nerdery comes out. Bryn Kenny has Ace King again. He raises. McKeon with Ace Three. Boy, they weren't kidding about getting it again, were they? All in. A shove. Call. And a call. Ace King suited. Yeah, obviously. Ace King. It's Domination Nation, and it's all about the Bryn Kenny. Yeah, he's a big favorite to double up again, and this time he would take the chip lead from McKeon. The flop. It's all Bryn. Doesn't affect Joe's immediate outs, but he could be dead on the turn. I know Bryn's girlfriend Zoya would like to see a spade. <laughs> Turn card. Nine of clubs. Chops, let's go. Paired. I'll take half, I'm not picky. <laughs> Still three outs. A three on the river would see McKeon win this, but it's a four. Yeah. 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 Nice, sir. And now, Bryn Kenny is back in command. I got a full drink and we got a full game, let's go. Jason Wheeler, beloved. Roughly nine million for Bryn Kenny, just over five and a half million for Joe McKeon. We're still at the 120-240 blind level. McKeon has fives on the button. 
It ain't nines, but it's good enough. We raise this to 480,000. King seven for Bryn. You have like 5.5 total? Sounds about right. Here we go. All in. Kenny shoves on McKeon. Oh. He calls and it's a race. We're flipping. I have fives, he's king seven. King seven versus pocket fives. King seven. F T W. If Bryn wins this race, he wins the tournament. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Bryn looking to seal the deal right here, right now. Here comes the flop. And it is always coming seven. Seven. One more seven. <laughs> Rude. Poor Joe McKeon. Will he ever win anything? Well, Bryn Kenny is a nine to one favorite. Joe McKeon has two outs. More outs now. Something. No five, no six. No Joe McKeon needs a five or a six to stay in the game. Any other card, and we have a winner. Kenny, focus on Kenny. The river is a yeah. jack. Bryn Kenny's finally done it. Yeah. <laughs> go, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Play great. You played great too. Yeah, thanks. The World Series champ is the runner up. Congratulations. Bro. Thanks, bro. And in super high rollers, Bryn Kenny now has two thirds and a first. Poor Joe McKeon only wins 1.2 million. Finally. I got the super high roller trophy. Nice. Let's go. Here we go. Let me take a picture of you and your buddy. Get over there. <laughs> my guy. Come on, take those. Shut up. I got Yeah, other Kenny, shut up. Nearly $1.7 million for Bryn, and he finally gets his hands on a PCA Super High Roller Trophy. Oh my God, they didn't kill Kenny for once. You got through. Yeah, it's nice. Third two times in this tournament. Feel like PCA is my place. Haven't had a nice trophy. First Super High Roller Trophy after a lot of deep runs. Feels great. Do you think it helped having all your buddies on the rail? I'm just happy that I won. See, now if I came in second and have all the buddies, you walk out of the place like with your head down, just like, yeah, this sucks, but we need the group photo and the win. That's what it's about. Well, let's, uh, let's let them get to it, everybody, right? One thing left to do, it's time to award our trophy to our PCA 2016 Super High Roller Champion, Bryn Kenny. Yeah. So Bryn Kenny finally gets the monkey off his back to win the super high roller, slicing through a world-class field to etch his name in PCA history. That was just the best to lift the trophy, to have all your friends rush to the stage. They were all the happiest and it just feels amazing. It's a perfect tournament to win, I feel like, after getting deep a lot of times. PCA is just my place. 